Welcome to Axelson Academy. Today I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite children's books that I use as a read aloud. This book is entitled Endlessly Ever After. It's by Laurel Snyder and Dan Santat and I find that this book is so much fun to read. It reminds me of the Choose Your Own Adventure books that I read growing up because you get to select between two decisions that the character is going to make about every other page and Pickle and Pumpkin love this book too. So it says right inside the cover that you are picking your path to countless fairy tale endings, the story of Little Red Riding Hood, Jack, Hansel, Gretel, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, a wolf, a witch, a goose, a grandmother, some pigs, and endless variations. Now I find that this book is perfect for grades two and up. It does follow um, some interesting storylines where your main character doesn't always make it. Yes, sometimes the wolf gets the best of her. Um, so it is just so entertaining and written with a beautiful rhyme scheme. When I read this with my students, I have them either hold up little cards with the numbers one and two on them to make their selection for the choice of the main character, Rosie, or they hold up their fingers, choice one, choice two, and as a class, they can vote what to do. Today, Dan's going to help me out from behind the camera. He'll be telling me whether I should take choice one or two as Rosie makes her path decisions. Your mama shakes you out of bed. She says, my darling dear, you need to run to grandma's quick. She's feeling ill, I fear. Now take this cake to cheer her up and have a lovely day, but mind the path for danger tends to lurk along the way. So up you jump, you give a nod and through the room you tear, but wait, you'll need to grab your coat. It's rather cool out there. What next, Rosie? Which coat will you wear? To slip on your coziest faux fur coat, turn to page 20. To grab your favorite red cape, turn to page 6. Dan is choosing the red cape, so we turn to page 6. A wolf is waiting by the path out in the morning sun. I like your fine red cape, he says, you heading someplace fun? I'm off to see my grandma, you tell your toothy friend. Her house is purple with a gate down at the very end. I haven't time to chat just now. I've got a ways to walk, but have a lovely afternoon. Another time we'll talk. The wolf just nods his furry head and quickly slips away. He flicks his tail and disappears into the sunny day. And standing on the path alone, you fear you've been unwise. You can't forget his claws or jaws, his shifty yellow eyes. You wish you hadn't met that wolf. You wish he didn't know exactly how you plan to walk and where you mean to go. Now what, Rosie? Are you going to let that wolf scare you away from your adventure? Yes, silly, wolves are no joke. To go back inside and start fresh tomorrow, turn to page two. To take a deep breath and journey on, turn to page 50. Ooh, Dan is being brave. We're going to journey on on page 50. You will not let that mean old wolf destroy your lovely day. That furry bully has no right to bother you this way. But you've a care for safety, and so you shed your hood. The sun is bright and you'll be fine. It's warm now in the wood. The smell of flowers fills the air, so fragrant and so sweet. But then you notice there's a sound, a somber, steady beat. You know your grandma's waiting, but she'll be home all day. You've got some time to wander. The question is, which way? What next, Rosie? What should you do with your extra minutes? To gather some fragrant flowers for grandma, turn to page 16. To follow the sound of the beating drum, turn to page 8. Ooh, we're going to follow the beating drum. Page eight. Here we go. The somber drumbeat leads you to a coffin in a glen. Inside you find a maiden fair, around it seven men. A drummer stops and waves hello, then reaches for your cake. So kind of you to come, he says. We'll serve this at the wake. You're not quite certain what to do. You don't mean to be rude. But you don't know this pretty girl, and that's your grandma's food. Now what, Rosie? Are you going to let those dwarves take grandma's goodies? Now, it's only cake, and they're re really sad. To let them have the treat, turn to page 66. Or, no way, you've wasted too much time. To grab your cake and head to grandma's, turn to page 54. Oh, we're going to go to grandma's, page 54. 
You shake your head. I have to leave or mama will be miffed. I'm sorry that your friend is dead. I hope your spirits lift. But once you're back upon the path, you hear an angry shout. Somewhere a boy is bellowing. You wonder what about. You've wasted too much time today. You'll really need to fly. But in your gut, you wonder what and who and how and why. What next, Rosie? First a drumbeat and now a shout? Are you really going to waste more time? To ignore the noise and run straight to Grand's turn to page 34. Who are you kidding? You don't have to know what all the yelling is about. Turn to page 56. Ooh, we're going to 56. You head off through the trees again. You track the shouts of rage and find them coming from a kid, a boy about your age. He kicks and shouts and punches. He bellows and he rants. He's also dripping wet and wears a frown and underpants. You blush until your face is red. You want to run away, but then you're also curious. How did he get this way? Now what, Rosie? Are you really going to hang around with this wet, pantsless boy? To head home now and avoid this ridiculous mess altogether, turn to page 64. To ask what's wrong and help this poor kid, turn to page 24. Ooh, we're going to try to help the boy. You step a little closer. You ask, are you okay? You look upset and sopping wet. I'm Rosie, by the way. Hello, he says. My name is Jack. I'm not okay at all. Some awful hunter stole my pants and boots, and that's not all. While I was bathing in the creek, he also took my goose. I only hope she manages to wiggle somehow loose. He ran in that direction. I don't know what to do. When Mum finds out I lost our bird, she'll put me in the stew. I don't suppose you'll help me. Go see if you can find the hunter and retrieve my clothes. I'm in an awful bind. What next, Rosie? Are you really going to head off on a wild goose chase? To apologize kindly, but head along on home. Turn to page 64. To do the kid a favor, turn to page 60. We're going to go to page 60. You quickly take your jerkin off and hand it straight to Jack. The poor boy's nearly naked. No need to give it back. And after that, you walk away as you climb a little hill. From there, you can see everything. A bridge, a fort, a mill. You spy your grandma's cottage, a stream, a pretty lake, and everywhere the winding path. So many turns to take. It's nice to rest a minute, to stop and think a bit, to see the world around you and slowly ponder it, until you spot a fluttering. A pale thing in the wood. Could that be Jack's beloved goose? Or is it gone for good? And somewhere else below, a man's voice fills the air. A hunting we will go, he sings. Be tasty and beware. Now what, Rosie? You aren't sure what to do. Which direction should you go to follow the ominous hunting song? Turn to page 14. To chase the vague white flutter that might be a goose, turn to page 72. Oh, we're going to go looking for the goose. Page 72 it is. You dash after the flutter and find it is the goose. But when you grasp her in your arms, she honks and wriggles loose. So with a shout, you try again, your breathless muscles soar. Still, this is fun. You've never chased a stolen goose before. She squawks and balks. She flaps and flops. But you are strong and fleet. You scoop her up and dangle her by both her yellow feet. She scrapes and fights, but you don't mind. You're proud as you can be. You turn and run right back to Jack. You grin triumphantly. Jack reaches for his naughty bird. Now time for a surprise, he says and gives a gentle squeeze. Then right before your eyes, Jack's goosey lays a giant egg too big for you to hold. Not only is it oversized, it's also solid gold. You thank Jack for this bounty. You set it in your basket. You wonder how the goose did that, but you have no time to ask it because it's getting late and now the sun is sinking low. Your mama will be furious. You really need to go. As you head home back on the path, you think about the day so full of strange surprises and wonderful that way. The end. 
If you follow some version of the Common Core standards, you know that in grade three, they do a whole emphasis on fairy tales. So this is also a great book to stretch out through that unit of study and really look at how these reflect traditional tales and the twists that the author gives on it. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.